Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we showed you how to calculate the transmission coefficient using the original equation, and this was the result. I added one more decimal place, so this was the, the result that we got by using what we would call the simplified equation for the transmission coefficient. Now we're going to do the same thing using the original equation that's derived from the original Schrodinger equations when they were solved using the boundary conditions. And of course, we're going to have to show you how to do that as well. But first, let's see what we get with this equation. Again, if we take the energy of the particle to be one electron volt, the potential of the barrier to be two electron volts, the width of the barrier barrier being 500 picometers and yes we're trying to find the transmission coefficient in such a way that we can calculate the amplitude of the oscillations of the particle on the right side of the boundary we've already calculated the alpha the alpha was the value we got here which represents the decay constant in the barrier region so let's go ahead and plug in what we know so far so the transmission coefficient is equal to one divided by 1 plus the hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic sine squared of alpha times L. Now alpha we had calculated before and that, that we wrote the value down it's 5.123 times 10 to the ninth and we have to multiply that times the value for the width which is 500 times 10 to the minus 12. So it's the, that's the alpha L. We take the hyperbolic sine of that, we square that, and we're going to divide that by four times the ratio of the energy of the particle divided by the potential of the burial, which is one half, and the one minus one half. So basically, one half times one half, which is one four times four, which is equal to one. So the whole denominator here becomes one. So we simply have to work this out, add one to that, and then take the inverse. So let's see what that is equal to. So let's take uh, 5.123 e to the ninth times 500 e to the 12th minus. And now we take the hyperbolic sine of that. So hyperbolic sine, and let me write down what that is equal to. So uh, this becomes t is equal to one divided by one plus the hyperbolic sine squared of 6.439 squared and the whole thing here is divided by 1 just so that you can see the reference of that so let's square that number and add 1 to that so that would be t is equal to 1 over 1 plus 41.46 which is 1 over 42.46 so add 1 to that take the inverse and we get the transmission coefficient is equal to 0 0.02355. So that's what we get with the original equation, not the simplified equation. And let's compare that to what we have over here. 0 0.02383, 0 0.02355. Not a very good 5, 5 here. Let me try that again. So it's a little clearer. 5, 5. There we go. And a little bit of difference, as you can see, but hey, the first two decimal places here, two and three are identical, and then instead of an eight, we got a five. So you can see, yes, it makes a little bit of a difference, but not much. For all intents and purposes, we have just about the same value. As you can see, that it does make a lot of difference, especially when the barrier is wide enough. Now, when the barrier is very narrow, then you have to use this equation. You can use the simplified version because then the, the differences will be quite large, and that's how it's done.